Summary of Mr. Pip by Lloyd-Jones The story of Mr. Pip begins with a description of the last white person living in a settlement on the island of Bougainville, which is located close to the mainland of Papua New Guinea. Matilda, who is 14 years old and tells the story, says that everyone calls this guy Popeye and that he looks like he has seen or known great suffering. Popeye is the only non-black person who lives on the island. To make things even more interesting, he often wears a red clown's nose and goes around town in a white linen suit while pulling his village-born wife Grace in a small trolley. Children fall in line behind Popeye and Grace, making a strange parade that the older people of the town don't understand. Popeye's real name is Mr. Watts, and he lives in the house that used to be the minister's. Like Matilda, the children of Bougainville haven't met many white people besides Mr. Watts, especially since the Australian workers left the island when the copper mine closed. In fact, Matilda's father also left Bougainville for Australia, so it wasn't just white people who went. Before Matilda and her mother Dolores could join him, though, redskins from Papua New Guinea came to the island to stop Bougainville from becoming a separate country. Matilda and Dolores had to stay on Bougainville because they were afraid of the gunboats and planes that patrolled the edges of the island. Matilda tells the story of how things got worse during the war, including how rebel troops rose up against the Redskins and went into the woods to fight guerrilla war. As fights went on all over the island, the power went out in their town, and the kids stopped going to school. One morning, when everyone in the village is worried about the Redskin or rebel troops coming, Dolores wakes Matilda up and tells her she has to go to school because Popeye is going to teach the kids. When Matilda gets to school, she counts 20 other kids whose ages range from 7 to 15. Popeye tells them, I want this to always be a place of light, no matter what happens. He says he knows what his kids call him, and they can keep doing it. Now that they are allowed to, the kids will stop calling him that and call him Mr. Watts instead. Before he sends the class home, he thanks everyone for coming and says, the most honest thing I can tell you is that what we have between us is all we've got. Oh, and Mr. Dickens, of course. The kids don't know who Mr. Dickens is and wonder why they haven't met him yet. Matilda tells her mother at home that she is going to meet Mr. Dickens the next day. Dolores is sure that her daughter heard Mr. What's wrong, but she tells her to ask the mystery guy to fix their generator just in case. When Matilda gets to school the next day, she finds that the other kids have all asked their moms for the same thing. Except for Mr. Watts, there are no other white people around. Instead, Mr. Watts opens a book and reads the first line of Great Expectations, where the character Pip describes himself. As time goes on and Mr. Watts keeps reading the book, Matilda becomes more and more fond of Pip. The first night after she hears Great Expectations, she tells her mother about the story. This is the first time in her life that she knows something that her mother doesn't. She tells her about the first scene of Great Expectations, in which a freed prisoner named Magwitch finds Pip in a field and tells him to come back the next morning to free him from his chains. Pip steals food from his sister, who is acting as his mother, and a file from his uncle because the convict says he will kill him if he doesn't do what he says. Dolores asks, what would you do, girl, when she hears this? If a man was hiding in a bush and asked you to steal from him, what would you do? What do you think? Matilda tells her mother that she would never do something like that, and she is glad that the dark hides her lying face. Dolores is worried about what Mr. Watts is telling her daughter, so she says, I want to know what happens in that book. Matilda, do you hear me? As the days go by, Mr. Watts calls the parents and cousins of his students into the classroom to give short, unplanned talks about anything they think they know about. These lessons range from stories about farming to thoughts about the color blue. During the rest of class, Mr. Watts keeps reading from Great Expectations, and Matilda works hard to remember the details so she can bring the story to life when she tells her mother about it later. By doing this, she hurts her mother's brain, which is sad. Dolores's mother never asks her again about great expectations because she doesn't want her daughter to go deeper into that other world because of her mother's pride in being smarter than Dolores. This puts an end to her mother's evening readings.
The first Redskins show up the next morning, but the locals hear their helicopters and can hide in the woods until the soldiers leave. The next morning, things don't go so well for them. This time, the troops land just as the locals get to the jungle. When they finally leave, the people of the town come back to find that one of their dogs has been cut open. Later that day, Dolores goes to Mr. Watts's class and talks to the students about how important faith is. She talks about the beginning of Genesis and how the first Christian preachers changed the old ways of believing on the island. In her short speech, she tells the kids to pray often because faith is like oxygen. Matilda thinks about how strict her mother is and wonders if she agrees with Dolores's strong ideas. As the story goes on, Matilda becomes more and more interested in Pip's life. She realizes that, like Pip's sister and his uncle, she will have to choose between her mother and Mr. Watts, who have very different ideas about the world. Living conditions get worse because of the war, and Dolores's dislike for Mr. Watts grows. In the meantime, Matilda's obsession with Pip only gets worse. She even uses rocks to write his name on the beach, which Mr. Watts sees and calls a shrine. Her mother starts to worry that Matilda doesn't care enough about family and faith because of this obsession. The Redskin troops come back to the town out of the blue. They land their helicopter on the beach, which surprises everyone. They line up the people in the town and ask them their names to try to find out if any rebel forces are hiding there. One of the troops tells the superior officer that he saw a shrine to Pip on the beach. The officer asks who Pip is and why his name is not on the list. Daniel, a very innocent little boy, says that Pip belongs to Mr. Dickens. When the officer asks who Mr. Dickens is, Daniel points to Mr. Watts' house. When he comes out, Mr. Watts says that he is really Mr. Dickens and that he lied to protect Daniel, who had accidentally lied to the Redskin officer. He then tries to explain that Pip is a made-up figure. To show this, he sends Matilda to the schoolhouse to get great expectations from the desk. But when she gets to the classroom, she can't find the book and goes back to the Redskin soldiers empty-handed. The troops think that a rebel named Pip is hiding in the village, so they gather up everyone's things, including furniture, and burn them all in a pile, threatening to come back in two weeks. Matilda goes home after the troops leave. Her house is now empty except for a bed mat that used to belong to her father. She pulls the mat down from the ceiling and lays it out on the floor, hoping to surprise her mother with this last piece of stuff. When she unrolls the mat, though, she finds Mr. Watts's copy of Great Expectations stuck in the middle. Matilda chooses not to tell Dolores that she stole Mr. Watts's book because she knows that would be choosing Mr. Watts over her mother. The Redskins come back in two weeks. This time, they look like they've been through a lot. The cop in charge is obviously sick. He wants drugs and tells everyone that he doesn't have the same patience as last time. When no one brings Pip or great expectations, the soldiers start setting fire to the people's homes. Dolores and Matilda stand still and look at the damage. After the second Redskin visit went wrong, class goes back to normal. Mr. Watts and his students are so bored that they plan to rewrite Great Expectations from memory. Each student tells Mr. Watts about a scene they remember, and he writes it in his notebook. Families are rebuilding their homes outside of the classroom. Even though their new homes aren't perfect, they provide enough protection. As Grace gets sicker and sicker, Mr. Watts' private life gets worse and worse. So, in addition to teaching, he spends his time carefully taking care of her. Matilda spends her free time trying to remember bits and pieces of great expectations, while her mother yells at Mr. Watts and mourns the loss of her pigeon Bible, which burned in the redskin fires. She passes away. Some of the men in the village use sticks and machetes to dig a hole for her, and the rest of the village and Mr. Watts gather around the ditch. Dolores finally says a prayer, but she almost forgets what she said. Then someone else thinks of another prayer, adding to this makeshift funeral. Not long after that, a group of rebel fighters shows up, putting the town in danger and making it a possible target for the Redskins. It's still not clear if the rebels will hurt the locals or not.
The rebels' rude treatment of Mr. Watts on their second day in town doesn't help clear things up. A drunk soldier threatens to rape him as he marches him away from his home, but Mr. Watts scolds the young man and makes him feel bad enough to buckle his belt again. Watts tells them his name is Pip when they ask him what it is. Later that night, both locals and troops gather around a fire as Watts tells the rebels what he is doing in Bougainville. He tells them that he will need seven nights to tell them his story. He then starts to tell a long story that mixes parts of his own life with parts of Pip's life. The two stories blend together and flow smoothly from one to the next. Mr. Watts says he grew up in New Zealand without a family. He finally bought a house there and rented half of it to Grace, who was there for medical school. He fell in love with Grace, and they had a daughter named Sarah. Sarah died young of meningitis. One day, Mr. Watts calls a day off from school, and Matilda finds him standing by the grave of his wife. He tells her that he has made plans with Gilbert's father to take a fishing boat to a place where another boat will meet them and quietly take them to safety. He tells Matilda that she must not tell her mother about this because he wants to tell her himself later. Near the end of Mr. Watts' seven-night story, the rebels go back into the woods early one morning. The Redskins come back the next day, this time dragging the rebel soldier who had threatened to rape Mr. Watts. The Redskin officer makes his rebel prisoner named the runaway Pip, and the man points to Mr. Watts' house. After shooting Mr. Watts, the troops cut him up with machetes. As a show of power, the officer then asks, who saw this violent act? He or she will punish anyone who says they saw the terrible thing. Sir, Dolores says, I saw your men kill the white man. He was a nice person. I am here to show that God is right. At this stubborn answer, the redskin officers drag Dolores away to be raped. They finally call Matilda and threaten to rape her too, until Dolores makes a deal with them and tells them to kill her instead of touching her daughter. Matilda is in a state of shock after her mother died and the redskins left the town. On the island, a strong storm is raging as she walks around aimlessly. She finally comes across a wild river that pulls her under until she grabs a log and floats out to sea on it. In the open water, she runs into the boat that Mr. Watts had set up to help him get away. The crew puts her on the ship and takes her to live with her father in Townsville, Australia. There, she grows up and goes to the University of Queensland until she gets her degree. Matilda still likes Dickens's books and is working on becoming an expert on them. She also thinks about Mr. Watts. While she was writing her thesis on Dickens, she went to New Zealand, where Mr. Watts was born. In New Zealand, she talks to his not-yet-mentioned ex-wife, who tells her about Mr. Watts's love affair with Grace and his passion for playing in amateur theatre. After a sad trip to England to do research on Dickens, Matilda turns her thesis about the author into a story about Mr. Watts, great expectations, and her own life. She writes, Pip is my story, and the next day she says, I would try where Pip had failed. I'd try to go back home. About the author. Jones was born in 1955 in Lower Hutt, New Zealand, and went on to study at Victoria University of Wellington. As one of the best literary writers in New Zealand, he has won a number of awards, including the Man Booker Prize for Fiction in 2007 for his book Mr. Pip. He has said that Great Expectations was the first adult book he ever read and that it changed the way he thought about books in a big way. He has written 15 books since then, including novels, collections of short stories, and a memoir. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.